Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back our MC, Andrea Roan. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed your dinner and the delicious dessert that I passed and watched everybody eating. <laughs> to start the next part of our program, I'm pleased to welcome a talented soloist, Daniel Noon. Enjoy talking with him at the dinner table. Dan is a senior voice major from the Catholic University of America, and he's won many honors for his performances. He's a member of the Sigma Eta Honor Society and has been on the dean's list every semester. Please welcome Daniel Noon, who'll pay tribute to our Seton honorees and the Seton scholars. Chuck and Nan Geschke 
have supported schools from the Midwest to California. We have Father Stephen Prevett, President of the University of San Francisco, to thank for nominating the Geshkis for Seton Awards. Father, will you please join me as we watch a wonderful video tribute to Chuck and Nan Geshki. Chuck and Nan are two of the most kind, gentle, generous people you could ever want to meet. They're a wonderful couple. They're deeply in love with each other. They have a great family, which is probably their best accomplishment. They have, um, to my mind, uh, just an absolutely remarkable partnership with each other. I think Chuck and Nan Geshke represent everything that we would hope for from Catholic education. Chuck Getschke is a member of the class of 1956 from St. Ignatius High School here in Cleveland and uh, a loyal benefactor over many, many years. They established the Getschke Scholars here at St. Ignatius High School to help uh, tuition assistance for families of modest means. At both of our high schools we give scholarships to young people who are very academically uh, capable and probably in the high 10 to 15 percent of their class, but in the lowest 20 percent economically. And we, that was probably pretty much characteristic of, of who we were when we were those age. Uh, our parents struggled to give us a Catholic education. We realized that the scholarships that we've been able to provide for our high schools have enabled other uh, children to uh, uh, attend the institutions who wouldn't be able to do that. Nancy McDonough Geschke first became known to the Marygrove community when she was a history major, when this institution was a Catholic college for girls. In the 1980s, Nan and Charles filled a tremendous need for Marygrove students to have a writing instruction center of their own on campus. Uh, an African-American uh, young lady came up to me and said that she had uh, had graduated from Mary Gove as well and gave me the year and she said she's now employed and she really credited the Writing Center for getting her turned around. You know, that was very touching to me. When Chuck was here uh, receiving an honorary degree, a little bit more than a year ago now, it was wonderful to have him back uh, because he's kind of a success story for, for us in a way, you know. Uh, a boy from Cleveland comes down here, gets a BA, uh, gets an MA, uh, goes off and changes the world with Adobe Systems. But philanthropically, they've been very involved, um, especially in terms of the library, um, because no accident, Nan herself is a librarian. Of course, these aren't libraries uh, as we think of them, sort of book tombs or something like that, you know. Um, rather, it's a very dynamic uh, space. Uh, we call it a learning commons. Uh, the, the spine of the learning Commons, it cascades up three stories, uh, is the Geshki Terrace. Uh, and it was just a wonderful thing for Chuck and Nan to be able to do uh, for us to help us accelerate our own student learning here into the 21st century. In honoring Chuck and Nan Geshki, we're clearly honoring a generous benefactor. The Geshki Learning Center here at the university, uh, the fund that we have to use to endow four chairs here at the university, but more than that is Chuck's leadership and Nan's support for him in his role as a trustee and chair of the Board of Trustees here at the University of San Francisco. In that capacity, he was incredibly generous with his time, with his experience, and with his insight. You know, people use Christ and Christianity for lots of different reasons. From my point of view, I wanted both of us to be in a position someday, if we we're sitting across the table from them, to say we heard you and we didn't do it perfectly and probably didn't do it as well as we should have, but we've tried. We tried to listen and tried to do what you asked us to do. And if I could do that, I'd be a very happy man. Please welcome this wonderful couple, Chuck and Nan Geschke.
<clears throat> well, Nan and I want to thank the NCEA for this wonderful recognition of what we've been able to do over the last 25 to 30 years. Uh, we definitely thank Father Prevet for nominating us and for being here tonight. Uh, he's a real inspiration to me as a leader in Catholic education and has brought the University of San Francisco to a point where, frankly, we could only have dreamed a few years ago. When Nan and I started our foundation, our goal was to do for the institutions that were important to us in our lives what we could to make sure that they could be important for the next generations of students coming up. And that's why you see the emphasis on academic excellence and uh, monetary need as part of the benchmarks that we use in whatever we give. Uh, the student you'll meet here tonight from St. Ignatius is one of the best representatives we could ever have hoped for in achieving that goal. And again, I thank you so much for this recognition. Thank you. Let's meet the Seton Scholar for the Geshkis. He's Sean Bush. He is a Geshki Scholar at St. Ignatius High School in Cleveland, Ohio. Sean currently holds a cumulative 4.2 GPA and is enrolled in four advanced placement classes, including calculus and physics. He also takes honors Latin. Sean's extracurricular activities highlight his love for computers and technology. He's involved in robotics, math club, science olympiad, com computer science group, and the pre-med society. He's an officer in the National Honor Society. Over the past three years, Sean has volunteered over 700 hours at his grade school maintaining their computer network and creating and overseeing the infrastructure for their 75th anniversary gala. He also plays the viola and piano and appreciates the time he gets to teach and mentor others in the arts. Last summer, Sean spent approximately 20 hours a week volunteering at Parma Community Hospital. Sean plans on being a pre-med major in college with a biochemistry minor. Please congratulate the guest, guestees and their Seton Scholar, Sean Bush. Our next award goes to a longtime friend of NCEA and Catholic education. To introduce our distinguished honoree, please welcome William Will Conway, Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Mutual of America. Thanks, Andrea. You're about to witness one of the great ironies in life. Um, we decided not to do a video for Tom so we could contribute more to the dinner tonight in Catholic education in general. So you get me instead. <laughs> Probably the least animated person in, at Mutual of America. <laughs> Billy Rose could be up here and doing, uh, our chief marketing officer doing a much better job. But I'm thrilled that I was asked to introduce Tom because this has always been a very special evening for me and tonight is personal. I've had the opportunity to work for Tom for over 30 years. And while we're not here tonight to recognize Tom's professional success, I would suggest to you that Tom's success is rooted in the values he embraced during his years in Catholic schools. First at St. Joseph Hill Academy and Monsignor Farrell High School in Staten Island, and later at Manhattan College. As chairman of the board, president, and CEO of Mutual of America, Tom manages one of the most successful financial services companies in the country. But to hear him talk about Mutual of America, Tom speaks not just of our financial strength and the services we provide to the nonprofit community. Rather, what he says he is most proud of is the culture of the company. 
And there's a number of you in the room that know who we are as a company and who Tom Moran is as a person. And this is a culture that is characterized by the respect our employees have for one another. And this is a culture that is defined by a sense of caring for each other, our families, and those we serve. I can't think of any better values to divine Catholic education and the tenets of the church. And we're proud to have Tom as our leader. Unfortunately, some companies have lost sight of how to manage their business appropriately. At Mutual of America, under Tom's leadership, we've never lost sight of how to manage our business because there's only one way to manage our business. And Tom instills it in all of us each and every day. There is never a decision made at Mutual of America that is not in the best interest of those we serve and our employees. The culture of Mutual of America is a reflection of Tom's personal values and influence. We witness every day his commitment to those values in the decision he makes in guiding our business relative to the products and services we provide to those we serve, and his sense of caring for all of our employees and their families. Tom's commitment takes many forms. Some are more visible than others. It's well known, not in only at Mutual of America, but throughout New York and indeed throughout the world, that his philanthropic endeavors are legendary. And they're legendary because he cares for those most in need. His sense of loyalty is unwavering. And it's characterized or evidenced by the fact that he remembers the sisters at St. Joseph's who cared for him when he needed their care. He recognizes the importance of Catholic education in his service to the Office of Catholic Schools in the Archdiocese of New York. And he also recognized the importance of education in improving the quality of life for children and their families throughout the world as Chairman of Concern Worldwide U.S. An organization that was founded by another very caring and loving person, a priest from Ireland named Father Angus Finucane. And I think that while Tom embraced the values of Catholic education early on in his life, it was Father Angus that reinforced those values and instilled in Tom a passion to do as much as he could for children throughout the world. I'm thrilled to be here tonight. Len DeFiori and I were talking, uh, I think we've been to every one of these dinners, and it is a special night, but I'm thrilled to be here to see Tom receive the NCA St. Elizabeth Ann Seaton Award, and I'm especially honored to be the one to be able to introduce him to you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Moran. Well, what do you mean we're not going to have a video? <laughs> I, I want to thank all of you for being here this evening, and I particularly want to congratulate all of the honorees. Um, as I watched the videos and heard the introductions, I have to say I wondered why I'm even here. Uh, I certainly don't think that I deserve to be among the other honorees. So as I sat there, I thought about it, and I realized I'm not a cardinal, although I did have a red top pretty good at one point. <laughs> I don't have a foundation, uh, and the, the people that went before me have done so much. And I decided that perhaps the reason I'm here is because I am basically a street kid from New York. I am the beneficiary of a Catholic education. One of the people that honors me by being here tonight 
is Sister William McGovern. She and my, her dad and my dad were very close when I was just a youngster in grammar school. The Daughters of Divine Charity never lost faith in me, and I've never lost faith in them. I wasn't able to speak until halfway through the second grade. And it was the good sisters that never gave up. My father always appreciated that. And he said he would always pray for them that they would finish the job and get me to shut up once in a while. <laughs> Well, bad news for you from heaven, he's still praying for that. <laughs> I was blessed by having the opportunity to go to Monsignor Farrell High School on Staten Island, where I worked as a janitor, and I shared notes with a friend of mine who had been the president of Tiffany's, and on the football team, we used to argue over who spent more time on the football field, him as a player and me as the guy cutting the lawn. From Farrell, I learned so much, and I'm delighted tonight that my scholar is a Monsignor Farrell man. He's part of the maroon and gold. He is far better than I ever was when I was in school. But it was because of that education I got at Monsignor Farrell that I was able to go to Manhattan College. And at Manhattan College, what you would find are young people, still to this day as it was in my time, where they were the first in their family to get an education at the college level. Now, I will confess to you that for four years I drove a taxi cab at night in New York City. Now, there's something very important that tells you, never get in front of me, <laughs> and never ride in a car with me. <laughs> I tell people often I was a better cab driver than I was a student, and the truth be told, I wasn't a very good cab driver. But I have had all the benefits of that great education that you get from the Catholic schools. But I would also remind all of us that an emphasis on education, a belief in the power of education, is not just something we find in New York City or Chicago or Washington, D.C. or Columbus, Ohio. It is something we find all over the world. I've had the privilege, as Will mentioned, of being involved with an international humanitarian aid organization concerned worldwide. And I've traveled throughout sub-Sahara Africa to the most remote areas that have suffered the greatest indignity of poverty, hunger, and the violence that men can do to men. And the one thing I've seen over and over again is that every mother, after feeding the child, after wanting clean water that's safe where you don't have to worry about dying from it, what they want most of all is an education for their child. That is what the Catholic Church has always believed in and known at its core, and it's what the NCEA, NCEA stands for this evening and every day. I congratulate and I thank all of the teachers that give their lives, whether they be lay or religious, to giving every child the belief that they can be better than they think they are and have a hope and a dream. Thank you very much.
As you heard Mr. Moran say, he wanted a student from his alma mater, Monsignor Farrell High School in Staten Island, New York, to receive his Seton Scholarship. That student is Sodomo Agoso. Sodomo is a junior at Monsignor Farrell, and he is a natural leader whose peers look to him to set a good example and provide class leadership. He runs track and is on the varsity football team. He is one of the founders of Hearing Our Heroes Club, which is a student-inspired and run club that visits veterans at the local VA hospital. Sodomo is also a leader in the Special Olympics Club. He was born in Nigeria and came to the U.S. as a small child. He graduated with honors from St. Rock Parish School. A gifted writer, his favorite subjects are math and science. Sodomo would like to go into some area of the medical profession, perhaps neuroscience. He looks forward to an internship at Staten Island University Hospital this summer. Again, please congratulate Mr. Moran and his Seton Scholar, Sodomo Agosa. Please welcome back NCEA's president, Dr. Karen Risto. Do you have to leave or can you stay? Right here. Before we present our final award this evening, please help me in thanking our wonderful MC and our faithful MC, Andrea Rowan. Whenever we ask Andrea to do this, the first thing she says is, how can I help? And we're grateful for that. Thank you. We're grateful to all the uh, Seton Award recipients for their gifts to Catholic education across the nation and for the example of generous lives well lived that you are for us. And we're just delighted to honor you. It's my desire together with the executive directors and our board of directors to also honor a person who has had a lifelong dedication to teaching, as did Elizabeth Ann Seton. And as a result, this person has a great influence and is a wonderful model of Catholic, for Catholic educators across the nation. Tonight, I am very pleased and pr proud to present the President's Award to Dr. Lorraine Ozar, the founder and the director of the Center for Catholic School Effectiveness at Loyola University Chicago, where her dean often remarks that he works for Lorraine rather than the other way around. Lorraine is an exceptional model of the good teacher, sharing her knowledge, yes, and inspiring us, yes, 